بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصل اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد وعلی آلہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد Continuing on in our dars in Aqeed al-Tawasatiyya by Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullahu ta'ala The Shaykh made ifbat or spoke about the affirmation of the kalam of Allah the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not created Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's speech, the Qur'an which is the perfect speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the creator of the heavens and earth, is perfect and uncreated. Even though some of the sects, the prior sects, believed other than this. And even this creed, unfortunately, which goes against the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, is prevalent, especially amongst those people who are jahil, those people who do not have knowledge or their knowledge is very, very limited of the religion of Islam, especially the minhaj or the methodology of the Salaf al-Salih, radiallahu ta'ala'inu majma'een, the creed of the Sahabat al-Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala'inu majma'een, and the creed of those, the tabi'een, with tabi'at, a tabi'een, and those who follow them until the Day of Judgment. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned those verses in the Qur'an or some of the verses in the Qur'an that affirm for us that the Qur'an is the divine speech of Allah the Almighty, that the Qur'an is uncreated, the Qur'an is the kalam of Allah, kalam Allah. The speech of Allah, the Almighty, قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم ومن أستق ومن أستق من الله حديثا وقال ومن أستق من الله قيل قيلا وقال وإذ قال الله يا عيسى بن مريم وقوله وتمت كلمة ربك صدقا وعدلا وقوله وكلم الله موسى تكليما وقوله منهم من كلم الله وقوله ولما جاء موسى لميقاتنا وكلمه ربه وقوله وناديناه من جانب الطور طور الأيمان وقربناه نجيا وقوله وإذ نادى ربك موسى أن أنأتي القوم الظالمين وقوله وناداهما ربهما ألا ألم أن أنحكهما عن تلكما شجرة وقوله تعالى ويوم يناديهم فيقول ماذا أجبتم أجبتم المرسلين الله سبحانه وتعالى says in those ayats and many of the other verses he says تبارك وتعالى and who is truer in statement than Allah and Allah سبحانه وتعالى says and whose words can be truer than those of Allah and Allah the Almighty says, And when Allah will say on the day of resurrection, O Jesus, son of Mary. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, And the word of your Lord has been fulfilled in truth and in justice. And Allah tabarak wa ta'ala says, Fi kitabi al-kareem, And to Musa Allah spoke directly. And Allah the Almighty said, To some of them Allah spoke directly. And Allah the most glorious and most high said and when Moses came at the time and place appointed by us and his Lord spoke to him and Allah the Almighty said and we called him from the right side of the mount and made him draw near to us for a talk with him and Allah the most gracious the most beneficent the Almighty said and remember when your Lord called Musa saying go to the people who are Zalimun the polytheists the wrongdoers and Allah the Almighty said and their Lord called out to them saying did I not forbid you that tree and he subhanahu wa ta'ala said and remember the day Allah will call to them and say what answer 
Or how did you respond to the messengers? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And if any one of the mushrikun uh, seeks your protection, then grant him protection, so that he may hear the word of Allah. And Allah the Almighty said, A party of them, meaning the Jewish rabbis, used to hear the word of Allah, the Torah. Then they used to change it knowingly after they understood. So they used to change the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is not the case of the Qur'an. The Qur'an is, is, is per protected from the people of innovation and the people of kufr and, and disbelief and zandaka who wish to change the meaning of the Qur'an. And Allah the Almighty said, they want to change Allah's words. Say, you shall not follow us. Thus Allah has said beforehand. And Allah the Almighty said, and recite what has been revealed to you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, None can change his words. And Allah the Almighty said, Verily this Qur'an narrates, uh, was narrated to the children of Israel, most of that about which they differ. Or verily this Qur'an narrates to the children of Israel, most of that about which they differ. And Allah the Almighty said, And this is a blessed book which we have sent which we have sent down. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Had we sent down this Qur'an on a mountain, you would surely have seen it humbling itself and rendering asunder by the fear of Allah. And when we change a verse, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And when we change a verse of the Qur'an, meaning when it's abrogated, in place of another, and Allah knows best, knows the best of what He sends down, they, the disbelievers, say that about the Prophet Sallallahu that he's a forger. Nay, but most of them know not. Say, O Muhammad, Ruh al-Qudus, meaning Jibreel alayhi salatu salam, has brought it, the Qur'an, down from your Lord with truth, that it may make firm and strengthen the faith of those who believe, and as a guidance and glad tidings to those who have submitted to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And indeed we know that they, the polytheists and pagans, say it is only a human being who teaches Muhammad, or teaches him, the tongue of the man they refer to as foreign, while this, the Qur'an, is a clear Arabic tongue. These verses, as well as many other verses, they illustrate for us the above verses mentioned. They contain the affirmation of the attribute of speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as we mentioned, many of the people of innovation dispute this fact. Sects like the Mu'tazila, the Kulabiya, and the Asha'ira. They say that speech is obligatory to the self of Allah from the eternity, which a lot of their creed stems from philosophy. And that it is not related to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's will and power, meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He doesn't speak when He wills. And he doesn't speak in a manner that suits his majesty subhanahu wa ta'ala. They regard this speech as free from words and sounds and say that it has a meaning in eternity. So again, this shows and illustrates for us how many of the groups, especially with the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they change the meanings. They distort the meanings to fit their intellect, to fit their limited intellect rather than affirming what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has affirmed for himself. As we mentioned in all those verses, how many verses did we just mention that contain and affirm for us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Moses alayhi salatu wa salam, and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks, and that this is one of his attributes which are both from his sifat or attributes, his sifat fi'liya uh, um, wa sifat his sifat al fi'liya wa sifat avatiya that they that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he speaks in a manner that suits his majesty and this is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does whenever he pleases and that also this is an action of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala possesses this characteristic this divine characteristic and at the same time he it is an action of his so that's why the ulama they classify this the ulama of Aqidah, 
they classify this attribute as one of his sifat avatiyah wa sifat al-fi'liya. So it's both of those attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for our reference, so that we, we have uh, uh, some sort of background about who these sects that w differed with Ahl sunnah with regards to the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we mention the Kulabiya. And they are the followers of Abdullah bin Sa'id bin Kulab. They believe that attributes of Allah are not for him and not for others. They say that the name of Allah are the same of his attributes. They do not differ between the attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's self, meaning the vatiya, and between the attribute of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's action, meaning his sifat al-fi'liya that we just referred to. The Asha'ira also differ with Ahl sunnah in this regard, which they are the followers of uh, Abu Hassan al-Ashari, who was Mu'tazila, Mu'tazila, uh, then he left his, uh, his Itizal and adopted a way between Itizal and Ahl Sunnah. So, Imam, uh, Abu Hassan al Ashari, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he had different, as the ulama, they explained that he had three different stages in his life, and in his final stage, he came back to the creed of Ahl Sunnah. So, in his last stage, he returned to the creed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah and followed Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal in his, uh, uh, in the creed of Imam Ahmed, which is the creed of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, which is what the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa Alaihi Wasallam left us with, which is the creed of Imam uh, Abu Hanifa, with Imam Malik, with Imam, uh, uh, Imam Shafi'i, with Malik, and all the Ahmet uh, al-Din, the Ahmet uh, Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. However, some of the followers of uh, Abu Hassan al Ashari. They still remained on the the previous his, his his belief prior to his coming back to Ahl Sunnah, and they amplify the attributes of Allah and belief similar to the Murjia. They are closest to Ahl Sunnah among all the astrayed sects. However, unfortunately, they have differed with Ahl Sunnah with some very important aspects of creed, and one of them is regarding the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and one of them and more specifically about the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and instead they make usage of philosophy instead of going back to the pristine creed which is clear from the Quran and clear from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam